The next story I wanted to take a look at is about pastors that have been freaking out over a Trump loss. They've been in complete meltdown mode since the election results came out. So I figured we'd watch this clip of a few different pastors losing their shit and turning into complete hypocrites in the process. This one is named Andrew Womack. So let's give it a watch and see what he says. I heard a leader in the body of Christ say that God sovereignly puts in the president. And so if, if Biden winds up being the one, then God is the one who put him in. And man, I just hate that. I disagree with that 1,000%. That's extremely fascinating to me because they just spent the past four years saying that God put Trump in. If God didn't want Trump where he is, then he wouldn't be there. And now they're spending their time saying they have to correct the mistake that Biden won and put God's person in, which is Trump. Let's see what justification he has. Give you one scripture that if you believe the Bible, it disproves that. And that's Hosea chapter 8, verse 4, and it says, And they have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. I mean, right there, the Lord just clearly says that I wasn't a part of you putting this king in. I'm not the one who put that prince there. God doesn't put people in who are going to kill and expand the killing of babies by the millions, even babies that have been born alive. Okay, I'm sorry. Wait a second. Babies that have been born alive? Who the fuck advocates for that? I've never in my life heard a single U.S. politician, or any politician for that matter, try to justify killing living babies, like after they've been born. What are, what are they talking about? They have to hyperbolize. They have to make a mockery of the positions. They have to straw man the positions of the other side to garner support, to garner enthusiasm. Their listeners are now like, oh my God, do they do that? I trust this guy. He's my pastor. If I can't trust him, who can I trust? Next thing you know, they're getting radicalized by what the pastor is saying here. It's completely absurd. It's completely hyperbolic, and it does not represent reality in any way, shape, or form. But it doesn't matter. The outside world sees it for what it is. Completely batshit crazy. But the world inside that church, the reality that these people live in, they believe it, and it makes them more enthusiastic. He's not the one putting in people that are pushing the LGBTQ uh, agenda and causing social upheaval. He's not the one that's putting in people that are going to socialize everything. You want to talk about social upheaval? God doesn't put people in who cause social upheaval. What about the people who went to the Michigan Capitol and did that anti-mask protest where they stood in front of it and screamed into people's faces? Do you guys remember that? What about the people who planned to kidnap the Michigan governor. That's not civil unrest. They're trying to frame their enemies as something without connecting the dots that they are the thing that they hate. Upheaval. He's not the one that's putting in people that are going to socialize everything and radicalize it. That's not God. Again, they're hyperbolizing. They are creating a good versus evil, us versus them mentality. For their congregants. There aren't any U.S. politicians, as far as I'm aware, that are socialist. There are social democrats like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Bernie Sanders, who are in favor of social programs like Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid. They want to expand those social programs. But none of them are full-blown socialist. As far as I'm aware, there are more differences than this, but the main defining feature of a socialist is they believe in the seizure of the means of supply and production. So in the words of a socialist, of which I am not, FYI, they believe that the workers should take control of the workplace, which in essence turns it into a government entity in practice. I don't know of anybody in the U.S. 
No U.S. politicians would actually want to do that. No Democrats certainly are advocating for that in the House or the Senate. They have to create this monster and convince people that it exists. That is the goal. That is the strategy here. This next pastor I wanted to watch is Mark Taylor. Let's see how he reacted. Seriously, brother, I mean, are you going to submit your congregation to Joe Biden? Exactly. I mean, give me a break. He will destroy you, don't think for one, you don't think for one second he's not going to shut these 501c3 churches down? I'm sorry, why would he shut down? First of all, I don't think churches are 501c3. I think they're just 501 corporations under that umbrella. I, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, somebody comment on the, on the clip here for me and clarify. But either way, why would Joe Biden shut churches down? Why would he do that? Why would he give a shit? I can see an argument where Joe Biden would make churches operate from Zoom I can see how he would make them operate online instead of in person. That would make sense. Or I can see where he would try to get them to lower the number of physical people present and hold like three services per day instead of just like two. But he doesn't have any interest in shutting churches down. We'll see in a minute why Mark Taylor, QAnon extraordinaire, believes that Joe Biden is trying to shut churches down. Mark. And you're saying you're going to submit to that? You're going to give up your guns, and you're going to submit your sheep to this to this uh, demon called Joe Biden? Yeah, uh, I maybe forgot to mention he believes that Joe Biden is a literal demon wearing human skin. Um, the guy is a complete nutcase, but we can't discount his opinion. He's a megachurch pastor. He is important. He's not a nobody. He's a QAnon supporter, a QAnon believer. He believes that protesters are being controlled with handlers on the street with umbrellas, MK Ultra, blah, blah, blah. Complete conspiracy theorists, like tinfoil hat kind of guy. And he's relevant. He's huge. So we can't just ignore him. Let's keep listening. Give me a break. Biden's been out there tonight basically blustering this fact, saying, look, I'm going to reverse the abortion rules of Trump. I'm going to reverse all these other rules. Uh, I'm going to reverse you're going to submit executive to that? order, and you're going to submit to that. That's not what Romans 13 said. There is something broken in these people. It's like 70 million people are brainwashed. Realistically, I don't think that the number is actually that high. I think a lot of people probably voted against Biden because they think that he's a socialist and all that other stuff, which means they bought into the propaganda. But the majority, I would venture to guess, of Trump's votes weren't Trump votes. They weren't like enthusiasm votes. I think Trump has a core base of extremists, enthusiastic extremists. And outside of that, the rest of the people are just voting are down ballot. Realistically, I don't think we have as many people to deprogram as 70 million, but this is a problem. There's one more clip of a pastor in this that I wanted to watch. This one is Richard Land. I am struggling why God would allow a Joe Biden and a Kamala Harris to continue to kill babies in this country, why it wouldn't be stopped. Can I, help? I just want to point out um, this hyperbolic kill babies talking point is absolutely ridiculous. That is not what's happening. It's a straw man devised by the extreme right. Let's keep listening. Well, it could be that um, uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are a judgment of God on the United States for our sin, for, idol for our idolatry, for our child sacrifice. I, I, how do we deal with this? These people are beyond mocking at this point, beyond parody. How do you make fun of this? How do you make this more hyperbolic? It's impossible. These people are a parody of themselves. Joe Biden is a judgment on the United States. I can't connect the dots why everybody is so scared shitless of Joe Biden. 
of what Joe Biden is going to do. But they're not scared at all of Trump. They love the guy. How do people's minds get to this point? Where is their head? This is a problem we're going to have to solve eventually. 